Meeting to order. This is the Board of Selectmen meeting, uh, regular meeting, Wednesday, May 17th, 2017. So I'd like to begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, while we're all standing, uh, I would like to mention the passing of Doreen Lounsbury. Uh, Doreen worked at the Superintendent of Schools Office at Dighton Rehoboth Regional for a number of years. Uh, she and I worked together in that office. And I would uh, often see her at uh, Lincoln Village. And uh, she also periodically would be at some of the volunteer recognition luncheons that uh, uh, the Council on Aging held. So I would ask for a moment of silence in the memory of Doreen Lounsbury. Thank you. And we extend our sympathy to her family. Thank you. Welcome. Well, we're going to start with public input. But since I see no one uh, from the public, other than the people that I know we're going to want to talk about tonight, so I guess we'll move on. So I want to do a, an informational presentation by uh, Ron Marino, our harbor master, and the purpose of this is to just kind of give people an overview of some of the rules on the river and also what they can expect as the summer approaches. So. Thank you very much. As 2017 season begins. Why don't you introduce your... Oh, uh, next to me is uh, Assistant Harbor Master Mark Duffy and Mooring Officer, as well as Assist Assistant Harbor Master Alex Symbolisti. Um, we put this together to be relatively expedient. Uh, I would like each one of them to have an opportunity to say a little bit. So, who we are as Harbor Masters, <clears throat> we're an appointed position under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 102. We enforce the laws of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 90B. The Harbor Master and the Assistants sit on the boards of the Disaster Preparedness Committee for the town. We represent the town in the Taunton Stewardship Council. We are members of the town's emergency response team. We're members of the Cape and the Islands Harbor Master Association and participate in on and off the water activities with the Massachusetts Environmental Police the United States Coast Guard, the Maritime Security Council, state and local law enforcement agencies. We also interact with first responder agencies as well as Homeland Security. Uh, I've introduced my two assistants, the two assistants right now, uh, recently, and uh, recently Mark was appointed to the newly created position of mooring officer. So any questions or requests for a mooring in the town of Dighton will go directly to Mark Duffy at this point. Um, the Harbor Master and the Assistant Harbor Masters, we each hold one or more of the following credentials, compliance with Massachusetts Harbor Master Training Council, Coast Guard Merchant Mariner Certificate, which is a captain's license, uh, Transportation Workers Identification Card, which is also known as a TWIC card, First Aid and CPR, Power Squadron and Coast Guard Auxiliary Training, National Association of State Boating Law Administrators, which is NASBLA, sorry for all the acronyms, but they exist. Uh, we've taken basic seamanship courses, enhanced vessel operators classes, boating search and rescue courses, just to name a few. Uh, we are also, I am personally also an advanced open water diver certified through the Professional Association of Divers. What we do, on the water, we're an on-water safety team. We basically ensure that safe boating practices are adhered to when we're out on the water. We're first responders on the water. We render assistance when and where needed to anyone and everyone that needs it. We're on the water law enforcement. We stop unsafe boating and we look for boaters violating state and local laws. That's not our primary function, but that is one of our functions. Uh, right now, we're currently working on a non-emergency towing policy that we'll submit to the selectmen for uh, review and approval because in the past we haven't towed anybody. Uh, we basically weren't well situated to do that. We now have a boat that in the event of a non-emergency and a, a salver hasn't been contacted, we would like to offer that. 
What should the public do coming up for the 2017 boating season? One, you should take a safe boating course, whether it's a NASBLA course, Coast Guard Auxiliary, Power Squadron, uh, any one of those. Uh, how, how, would they, how would they know who they contact to find the windows are? Any, I would go online. Um, all, the, all the courses have already started, but they generally run, uh, they hop scotch throughout the summer, and they're all over uh, southeastern Massachusetts. So go online, look for um, safe boating courses in Massachusetts, and you're going to get hits for all three of those uh, groups. Can I ask you a question? You yes. said first respond. Do you mean if someone is on the water in Diane and they have you know, a medical emergency, what happens? Do you, well, do you guys we, first respond to that as well? We do, uh, whether that's to get there to assess the needs of the person or to bring uh, EMS, EMT, safety personnel out to them. Yeah, because we're the only way for them to get there. Are you, you have any of you EMT certified? No. No. Nope. Uh, another thing you can do is pick up a copy of the state boating regulations, which is this little booklet right here, which there's, we just put copies out in the front lobby. Um, it's a, a summary of many of the state boating laws and safety, safety laws. Um, Next thing is always wear a PFD, a personal flotation device. And I would suggest, you, if you're going to get one, which you should, get one that's comfortable for what you're doing. And you will wear it. Uh, you may not have worn one before growing up, but things are different now. So, uh, and the last thing before I hand it off to Mark is be aware that as the captain, you are solely responsible for the safety of your crew, your boat, and the effects of your boating actions on private property. So keep that in mind. You know, the PFD issue, I've been, I've been, I do a lot of fishing up in Canada. Mm -hmm. In Canada, everybody wears a PFD. Mm -hmm. We yep. come down here, a few people do it. But boy, it's something that everybody should be wearing, absolutely. And, and you know what? 50% of the time, it's people say, well, it's uncomfortable. Well, there are so many styles. Buy one that fits your right. style of boating, and you will wear it all the time. It's like wearing a helmet if you buy a at this time, I'd like to uh, hand it off to Mark Duffy, our mooring officer. Good evening and thank you. As the mooring officer, I'm responsible for tendering the applications. Um, we currently have 80 moorings uh, along our waterfront area. We have nine private aids uh, within the Dighton Harbor. Tartan Yacht Club in Charlemette, they own and maintain the majority of those 80. Um, and I have recordings of all of those and they're processed through me. For individual moorings, we have a $50 mooring fee, which again comes, the application is on the town website. It's under the, the Harbor Masters Department off. Um, that's filled out, that's submitted to me. I'm also responsible for the 10A floating docks. So anybody that wants to put a dock up there, their application comes through me. We have an understanding um, with the building department there to review it for constructability anything that's attached by line or directly to the shore. Um, I'm also a representative on the Taunton St River Stewardship Council. I attend the meetings there and represent Dighton in that regard. We've done a lot of real good things recently with some studies that are going on in the river to enhance the, the ecological impact, the various studies and stuff like that that's going on. That's my function. Who, who, who can get more on that water? Any town resident can get a more. Resident. Yes. And the application is on the Dighton Town website underneath the Harbor Master Department. Okay, that's great. I'm sorry? And out of town as well. And out of town as well. Okay. So mm -hmm. out of town, you can come in and get yeah. one? Okay. What does it cost for a mooring? It's $50 for a town resident, and I'm going to defer to... It, it's, we just have a flat $50 fee. Mm -hmm. It's something that was recently implemented, so we don't have a fee structure. We just have one flat rate so It's 50 fee. bucks for the year? For the year, yeah. Mm -hmm. be that and that, nice. that mooring would be placed at the... Uh, yes, down at the boat ramp. That's where the majority of the free space is, and that's where the parking is as well. Oh, now, out of the eight, you said that you have 80 mooring spots? Col all told, including Charlemette, and the Taunton Yacht Club. There are 80 morning spots. Yeah. The, morning, the morning spots that are out in front of Shaw's Bow Yard are technically in Berkeley, so we're not responsible for the, the maintenance of those. So out of the 80, how many usually get, get filled? Right now, there's probably about 30. Okay. 30 last year. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. When you drive down Pleasant Street and you see boats moored here and there, how do you determine where a boat gets moored? Is it if I lived on Pleasant Street, would I want a spot right out there near my house, or, or how do you do that? If you're a resident on Pleasant Street, you're given preference to a spot out in front of your house, provided it doesn't get within close proximity to the channel. You have to leave a certain amount of space in the channel for a navigation both to and from. Okay. Okay. For the general public looking to put a mooring out, that's typically because of the parking scenario. We put them down by the boat ramp because okay. there's plenty of parking down there. In that case, they're not parking in front of your house to take walking on private property to go to their boat. That's why that area would be designated to the boat ramp area. Is there a fee if I just, you know, had a boat tra and a trailer and I want to go out for the day, I just I can go down to boat ramp. There's no fee for me to put that boat in or just, okay. There would be a park and rent um, fee if it, if it was. Park and rent is in charge of those. Okay, but there isn't a fee at this no point. Fee. Okay. It's a pretty poor boat ramp, so it would be difficult to charge somebody to use that. How deep is that anyway? Depends on the tide. Yeah, the tide is, I mean, I, I put a 21-footer in there at mid-tide. I fired my engine up and I sucked up half the bottom of the Taunton River. So it really does depend on the tide. High tide, you can get away with a 21-footer. You can put canoes all over the river. I mean, there's seven different launching spots along this river for canoes and kayaks and stuff like that. But to launch a boat, Woody's right. Yeah, that might be something we might want to put on the website if we can. Maybe just a simple map of the, of the river and identify where those spots are for people, you know, just some information. So you work with Brett and... Is yeah, Sweet Snow one of the places? Yes. Oh, okay. I believe they have a fence uh, up near the house now. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to walk from the parking area at the house all the way to the river before you see able to drive it. Okay. It's a long walk. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's my portion of this presentation. I'll give it back to Ron. Uh, two more minutes, and we'd like to have Alex say a few words. Thank you for having me. Um, so in November of uh, 2016, um, as you know, the town of Dighton has uh, moved ahead and has purchased a 2006 21-foot Boston Whaler Justice um, from the town of Chatham. Um, this boat has a Yamaha 254-stroke engine, as well as a, a load right trailer. Uh, the boat went into service as far as the town um, as the new Harbor Master boat in early December of last year. So it was in for a few weeks and then obviously with uh, winter impending it was taken out and um, is, is currently back in the water. Um, the boat's equipped with emergency lighting, radar, GPS, chart plotter, sonar, radar communi rad radio communications, VHF and police dispatch radio, a town a, t a tow bar, sorry, and a dive door, um, which makes it very convenient as far as uh, um, doing a rescue or putting in and out of uh, getting debris off the water or putting in and out no wake buoys for the town. Um, a dive door um, comes right, basically the door comes right off the side of the boat, so you have a, a good three foot section where you it's open. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a very um, very safe way to get somebody in and off instead of you know so that is a, a big upgrade from our, our last boat that um, was sold now since it's been sold uh, to the Berkeley Fire Department so um, as far as some more information if you are interested um, in kind of getting more um, knowledge about the town um, Harbor Master group here online on the website we have all of our harbor plans mooring applications our 10a floating docks um, also, all of our contact information is on there, so our, our cell phones, our emails, we all have emails, cell phones are listed. Um, and when we are on the water, um, for the general public to know, um, we are always monitor, uh, monitoring Channel 16 on the VHF radio. It's an emergency radio system for uh, boats when you are underway on the water. So if anybody's ever in need of assistance, that would be the channel to go on. Um, so, question, where... Describe the no-wake zone, because that's always an issue, you know, where, where can you go with a no-wake zone, I guess. I'm going to have Ron kind of finish <laughs> up on that. Um, there's, there's a couple of uh, different Massachusetts general laws that we are currently enforcing, um, and Ron would be the gentleman for that. 
effectively, the, all of it's no wake zone under Massachusetts general law. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Right. Massachusetts, in a navigable channel or narrow fairway, yeah. all vessels must operate at what's called headway speed, which is the slowest possible speed that you can operate your boat and still maintain steerage. That's Massachusetts law. It's been there forever. Uh, we have no wake buoys as reminders. Excuse me? There, there are many who don't know the laws and will disagree with the enforcement of it. However, the laws have existed long before many boaters have been out there. Um, and my message to them is, when they say, I've been doing this forever, I say, no, you've just been getting away with it. So the no wake zone is from Shaw's Boat Yard all the way to the Shawmut Yacht Club. It's can 14 to 23. I believe it says there's a town website there from Peter's Point to Hot Street. That is correct. That okay. is the original town bylaw. That's right. a section. And that's what it says in the bylaw. That, that's okay, um, but that doesn't mean it excludes other areas. That's just one section that I've done. My problem is, Mr. Marino, um, I've been on the water a long time. Mm. And since you took over, all, I have to say, and I'm going to try to say this in the nicest way possible, I want to come across as an ass. But you've been unreasonable on the water. Very unreasonable. Um, people are out there to have fun, and I'm, I'm sure you want to protect that section of the river, and, and I'm all for that. But once people go by Hot Street and they want to jump on it, let them jump on it. People buy these water no, cars. No, no. no. So no. the laws state that you shall operate at headway speed. You just said you've been doing it all your life, and I just said you've just been getting away with it. If you, if you don't like the laws that we have in Dayton Harbor, you're free to boat somewhere else. Oh, it's thank you very much. Now, I've seen you and Alex both speed up and down the river. Let's not get into uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, No, I, just, I just a minute, Woody. We want you to define what the, what the law is. What is it? How he reads this law. Okay, but, but let's, let's... Please, be realistic. Well, Jack, he pulled over 117 boats last year. I'm quite sure that Patrolman Nichols didn't even pull over 117 cars. My point is, we're not going to resolve. He's out that. of control. We're not going to resolve that issue here tonight. That, that's an he issue. He's out of control. Woody, you brought the the issue up. We'll look at the issue, but we're not going to resolve it here tonight. That's not the purpose of this meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to is an informational, so at least people know what the rules are. And then if we need to address the rules, we'll do that in a, in a separate form. People have a disagreement with the rule. It's actually the law. They are free to go to the state house and okay. contest the law. It's not up to me. I don't have a problem with you or the other gentleman, but this man is out of oh, I, I have Woody, a question. Let, let's get back to the topic here. Um, so when I go down Pleasant Street, um, sometimes, and I'm not sure I've seen them this year, sometimes there's a, there's a marker out there that says five. And I've seen no wake zones. Is the five a speed limit? The five was an arbitrary number that someone put out there. Okay. But there's no, in Massachusetts law, defined speed limit number for the minimum. Okay. It's headway speed is how it's defined under 323 CMR 2.08E. Does that include, that, that apply to all rivers? Um, all inland waters in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Inland waters meaning everything shoreward of the line of demarcation which separates uh, inland from near coastal. So if I have a small boat, a 16 footer, mm -hmm. and you have your boat, a boat the size of the town boat, let's say, your private boat, am I gonna go faster or slower to be able to main that, maintain that headway mm -hmm. speed? Because you you get a bigger boat with a stronger engine, and I got my little 16 footer with a you know rinky dinky. Depends on the tire. I'm not sure. It could depend on the tire, the, right? All boats can travel at headway speed. If the boat can't travel at headway speed, then it shouldn't be off the dock. But I didn't know if the size of the boat. No, affected. you can be in a small skiff at headway speed uh, and zipping right along. You could be in a. 45 footer at headway speed and still with 25,000 pounds of mass moving right along. Oh, okay. You know, if you're going against the tide, obviously right. the tide's going to hold you a little bit, 
But again, now you're, you might be losing headway speed, so you might bring it up a little bit. People, I see people in sailboats, like a lot of sailboats on the river. Yeah. When they're going through the, um, the no wake zone, are they, are they under sail or are they, do they have a little motor going? I mean, if they have the motor going while they have their sail up, they are considered a power boat. A motorboat. If they are under sail with no mechanical means of propulsion, they are a sailboat. Okay. And there's a hierarchy of uh, who has the right of way, but in our area, they would fall under having the right of way as a sailboat unless it was a vessel not under command, a vessel restricted in its ability to uh, maneuver. Um, or a vessel constrained by its draft, but we don't generally get those types of vessels up here unless those are commercial work vessels, like a barge with a crane on it, might be a, con a vessel constrained by its oh, draft. Oh, for the bridge, those big cranes yeah, they no, have. So if a sailboat is coming across the, the channel, that <coughs> vessel constrained by its draft or restricted in its ability to maneuver would have headway, would have right of way over the sailboat. Okay. But otherwise, for just recreational boaters, the sailboat's gonna prevail. Just, just one other question. When they were moving those barges up and down the river and all that, did they notify you ahead of time? That uh, in the beginning, they did. Okay. They did. Um, I asked them if they were okay with transiting to the bridge. They said they were, because uh, I offered to go with them. And they said, no, we're good. I said, okay. Okay. All right. I have a couple more questions. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Jack, I would like to know if the no way movies are are registered with the Coast Guard? Yes, they are. All of them? Yes, they are. I, okay. I geolocate them and I report them to the U.S. Coast Guard. Right. And I also want to know if there's a maintenance plan for this new boat. I mean, the last boat, you just ran it into the That's ground. Exactly. And I would like to know if we're going to maintain this boat. So, and, and would I have to answer the question? Is there a maintenance program? Yes, there is. We actually contracted with uh, a company here in town that does marine outboards, who is Yamaha certified, who what does... Their name, sir? Can I give their names at this meeting? Of course. I don't think, I, no, I don't think we need to get into it, that. It's he, public record, he but... Says I, he, if he says he has a maintenance plan, I'm going to take him at his word he has a maintenance mm -hmm. plan. So if... I noticed you didn't increase his budget this year. Okay, this is not the purpose of this presentation tonight. If you want to talk to me personally about it, with the issues you have, then we'll, we'll go with that. But I don't think that's the purpose yeah, of this. Been going on for years. This is not the purpose of this meeting, Woody. And if you can't adhere to that, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You know, I appreciate. You, Jack. I appreciate your your concern. What happened about your agenda? Is my agenda? Is that just a campaign? It's not a, not an appropriate. This is not appropriate forum for the questions you're asking. You can talk to me personally, and I will look into the things you're concerned about. But I don't want to waste the public's time at this meeting today. That's not why we asked him to come here. We asked him to give an informational so people can understand the rules of the river and what they can expect. And I'll talk to you individually. I'd be glad to do that. Thank you, Jack. Okay. I have one other question. When, you, when the boat goes out on the river, the town boat, are there always two people on it? No. No? No. Do you do regular patrols? Like, you know, the summertime when it's busy, yes, in the evening you might have boats coming and going and people People, I assume, stay on their boats sometimes Our, out there? We generally try to get Friday night, if it's a, a busy night or a longer weekend, we'll try to be there for Friday night, 4 to 7, 8, when the most traffic's going to be there Saturday morning. Uh, Mid-Saturday afternoon, because you do get a lull from about 10 o'clock till maybe 2 o'clock. Everybody's already gone out, and uh, people downriver may find it rough, and they start venturing upriver, so from 2 3, 4 o'clock, you'll get a little more. And then usually around 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you'll get another wave. And then Sunday, uh, same, same scenario. Do, do some people stay on the, their boats? Because some of the boats look oh, pretty yeah. good size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, many people do. Yeah, I yeah. know several people do. Yeah, the yacht clubs uh, have rendezvous where <clears throat> they have other yacht clubs visit, and they might raft up together. There might be six, or seven boats. Or yeah. something. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they do that a lot. You can tell I'm yeah. not a boater. Okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Any, uh, I see some more public in. Come in. Any, anybody have other public input before we move on to our other agenda items? Okay. 
Um, the next item on the agenda is under all business is a, a letter of support or non opposition to the proposed medical marijuana facility. Now, the uh, Green Harbor medical marijuana dispensary uh, came into our uh, to our meeting several weeks ago and made a presentation to us. They then just last week, I think, made a presentation to the planning board. Uh, the planning board has has given us a, <coughs> a letter that they are. Uh, let me read it to you. Planning board has pre had a presentation on May 3rd, 2017, by Green Harbor Dispensary. The planning board is a supporter and recommends the town move forward with the procedures to allow the cultivation facility and the dispensary to be located here in our town. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call the planning board office. So we have that. The um, Industrial Commercial Committee also has met. They're the ones that kind of initiated this, this uh, process to have them come in. And they also have uh, given us something that says that obviously they they're want us to move forward with it. Now, <clears throat> I'm not sure this is, I'll, I'll open this up to discussion amongst any of us. I'm not sure we're in a position to say at this point that we support the project because I don't think we yet know enough about it. But I am, but I would, I would suggest that we're in a position uh, to give them a letter of non-opposition at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, they, the, and the reason for that is the Green Harbor Company needs that letter to go forward to the state to put in their application and then they can start the process. <coughs> During the course of, of the, the uh, um, permitting process, there will be public hearings about it. Planning board will have public hearing. I don't know about zoning, but there will be public hearings where, where there'll be more information. So, mm -hmm. um, was there an informational meeting after you met with the, the board the first time? There was a date tossed around. I remember there was, that. There, there was, was a planning one. board uh, yeah. meeting on the third, and then I believe there is or was no. an informational well, meeting on the twenty third. Right. We, which we'd rather not bring Green Harbor back in again. Right. So soon. And as you go along the previous procedure, make sure it's well announced as you directed today with right. my meeting with you. Right. And um, so that anybody that needs to speak out can come. And I think, I think if we have an informational meeting, I think we need to spend a, a good amount of effort to really publicize it so people know and people come down here and, and really right. you know, hear about it and, and have their voices heard. So, and I do want to say that we've been in the Development and Industrial Commission has been involved with this process since the get go since they contacted me as chair of the Development and Industrial Commission. Thank you. Any other comments or thoughts on I don't have a problem sending the letter. It'll be the next, that'll just be the next step. Mm -hmm. right. Then they got to go through the state process yeah, right. to they do whatever. And that's when, <clears throat> it, it, if, if they get through that process, then that's when it comes back to the town for public information and all that yeah, stuff. So, right. So this is just one more step in a process. So I just want to I just want to make it clear to the public that we're, we're, with this letter, we are not saying that we uh, support it uh, full right, forthright, and, until we get more information. We're just but, saying. But we're getting the process going. We'll support taking the next step. Right. Is that, this gentleman had, a, yeah, had his hand up. Letter, when they were here before, they specified a couple sites, specific right. sites of, of interest. Yeah. Does the letter of non-opposition specific to certain sections of town or properties, or just more than um, To their point. It would be to the proposal. The marijuana overlay district. Right. Uh, medical marijuana overlay district, where it says where these facilities correct, need correct, to be. Correct, correct. So, like Jack mentioned, CBA, but mm -hmm. don't need to bring in. I don't CBA. know. Okay, I just. You, but I mean, the town has already voted to accept medical marijuana in our town. Right. And the town already voted to accept marijuana on the statewide level. Dayton overwhelmingly supported that. Right. So there's there's support in our community for this. Right. So yeah. you know, I think we should be for it. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, the yeah. people are for it. So mm -hmm. we're here for the people. Absolutely. So to respond to this gentleman's question, then, really, the town has already designated mm -hmm. location. Yes. This is the next step so that this company, group, whatever, can file mm -hmm. papers with the state. Mm -hmm. 
but they still don't have approval. They don't. They've got to come back to the town with more info. And all right, I understand. So I Sir, could we have your name for the record, just so Karen has it? Uh, Dan Higgins. Please. Dan Higgins. Dan Higgins. Karen, you, Higgins. Mr. Yeah. Higgins. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks, Woody. Yeah, that's a good point. It's already been voted as a, you know, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and so, this this would be, be a letter of non-opposition, not in general, for whatever plan that they have, where specifically where they're going to go, um, where they plan to have the dispensary, right. where they plan to have the cultivation site, which has kind of already been determined by the bylaw that was passed. So I guess the question so. of, at hand is, do we do, we do a letter of non-opposition or a letter of support? Uh, well, so I will obviously speak for myself. I'm in support of the project. Um, I guess for the purpose of the letter right now, I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, basically what we're saying is, one second, what we're saying is we're not going to, if it's a non-opposition letter, we're not going to be the thing that stands in the way. At this um, point, at, yeah. at this point, right. Um, so I guess it's up, you know, up to you guys. I, you I, I'll su I support it. Right. Yeah. 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 We, that's, that's what we want to have happen. I just uh, because the, yeah, as I said, the additional hearings. Mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. I'm just writing something as a proposed motion. I I will say though, I do think a letter of support would go a long way. Not just for Green Harbor, but for any business that may be watching that right. um, Dighton is open for business. Um, we're ready. Um, I'm going to make a motion that the board uh, supports moving ahead with the proposal and will prepare a letter uh, to that extent, in other words, it's just going to say that that the board is supporting moving forward what with the project. It needs to see. They're going to need to say, "Let we are in support of the project, or we are uh, we are." Um, would you just say what I just say? Supports the proposal. <laughs> or, we're, or we're not. We're we we have no opposition to it. So I think that's the question at hand. What's the letter going to say? We're in support of it or we're in non-opposition? I think the board should support it, and the reason I think the board should support it is because. You know, I really think that this is a chance for us to send a message right. that we are ready to have commercial industry come into Dighton and help us uh, balance the tax, the tax system, the yeah. tax structure. Now is the time. What was the vote? Um, I'm going to withdraw that motion because I'm working on another one. The the vote of the uh, planning board was they approved. So they support it. They support it. Yeah. Okay. So I think. So I think. In light of what you brought up, the point that the, the town has already voted to support the medical marijuana zoning, yes. and the fact that the planning board has voted to support it, Correct. then I'm comfortable writing a letter of support for it uh, rather than just non opposition. So I think the motion can be very simple. All right, so um, I move that the Board of Selectmen prepare a letter in support of the medical marijuana proposal. I second that. Okay, all in favor? Carol, you, uh, Karen, do you have? Yep. Well okay, all in favor say aye. You can, aye. Uh, aye. Well, well, you can ask for discussion before. Okay. The vote. <laughs> Just in case somebody wants <laughs> yeah, to say something. Of course, something. of course. Is there further discussion? I'd just like Mr. to Morgan. say I think it's a win-win right. for the town. Right. I'm for it. Yeah. And for being a veteran, yeah. Yeah. you'd be better than <laughs> having friends that have been involved with like Mm -hmm. PTSD, for example, without mentioning mm -hmm. names, but mm -hmm. it right. seems to help them. Actually, we do have a couple of letters of support here from people that have had some uh, experience with the medical marijuana. So, and I think it's, I think the, the literature and everything really supports it as a, a new medical mm -hmm. Think so. I, I would I would like to say one thing before we take a vote, Mr. Chairman, for the people who maybe don't support it. Your concerns will still be heard absolutely every step of the way. Um, just because the board may or may not vote to support it doesn't mean that that means your voice doesn't matter or won't be heard throughout the process. It will be. We promise you that. Yeah. This you. only gives the Green Harbor 
uh, the opportunity to move forward with the state. That's all it does. So uh, it's not a done deal, and there'll certainly be more discussion about it. It gives us the edge, Jack, because if we yeah. tell them no, they're going to go somewhere right. else, right. and somebody else is going to profit. We won't. We won't say no at this point. No, yeah. I agree. We. Uh, and I would also. We're, we're, we're left that they came to us. Absolutely. Hundred percent. Yeah. Absolutely. Agree. I would also encourage the public or anyone who is not sure about this or has questions <clears throat> or maybe in opposition to it right now that you get your questions, feedback, your opinion to the board so that we know what the feeling is out there. And if there are questions, certainly we want to be able to have a, uh, an open door that we can give you information or if they have to come in or yeah. whatever. We want, we want to be very clear. This, this is not recreational marijuana. This is medical marijuana. And they are two totally different uh, processes. And uh, the recreational marijuana is a long ways off still. But medical marijuana is it's already it's already in a lot of places so that just want to make that clear so don't worry about the recreational side of this at this point so any further discussion okay take a vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion carries unanimously open for business Go. thank you thank you planning thank you vicky and thank i just Woody. i just wanted uh commend commend the board commend the planning board commend Vicki and the Development Industrial Commission Board. It's clear everybody is on the same page and I think it's good for the town. Okay, the next and item on. The board is yeah. Thank you, Mr. Figueredo. <laughs> yes. Okay, the next, the next uh, little business we have uh, is to discuss the town administrative selection process and the status of that. Um, let me just, Go through the process that has occurred here. Um, back, I guess it must have been in February, an advertisement went out and we got a number of applicants, a very large number of applicants. However, out of, we, had, I think we had 52. Yeah. Out of that 52, as we did down, there was only 15 that actually met the criteria. Mm -hmm. And out of that, the, uh, the uh, town administrator screening committee gave us eight names. Then what happened was, Two of our very top candidates uh, have found other other positions, mm -hmm. and and so my concern at this point is that you you can't accept an application in March and get to mid May two and a half months later and then try to talk to people about a job because as everybody knows the people that are the, the top notch people are finding jobs someplace else so I think. And I think this is such an important uh, uh, position we're trying to hire to uh, that we need to re in my, my opinion, we need to we need to re-advertise and start the process over with a commitment that we will advertise, we will have a very relatively short period for people to apply for it, and then we will have a very short period to make a selection. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll still go through all the, the right process and make sure we do the proper screening and stuff, but. Uh, I will, I will, I will commit us to a shorter, much shorter process of, of 30 to, mm -hmm. 30 to 45 days maximum to get this wrapped up. Would it still go through like a committee, like the town administrator? Uh, we committee? need to talk about that. I think, uh, you I, know, I appreciate the work of the committee, yeah. which Vicky was on it, and but I, but that you know, and that's good, but it slows the process tremendously. And the, the committee, the committee did a tremendous job once we gave them the applicant, but. And I think he got back to us in two weeks, two weeks. But the problem was the app, we didn't get them, they didn't get the applicants until two weeks before we started really getting this process. So, well, and, and also, we, I, if this is what the board wants to do, I do think the board should look into possibly not having the posting be a month long. No. Because no. I think by the time the posting ends, it's already been 30 days. Yeah. Those people are already getting yeah. feedback from other people that right. they've applied to. I absolutely agree. I, I'm thinking, again, we have, I'm, I think in uh, two weeks. So can I ask you, are you going to advertise with the MMA again, right, the Beacon? Yeah. We got we and got good candidates from that. The, right. the third the third. Are you going to advertise anywhere else? I don't know. That's what we need to look we, at. I, I think I think, I think we, we should. Going to the Beacon. I know. Yeah, we, I think we need to. Right. I think we need to look at the sites that might produce a candidate. Mm -hmm. So and I don't right. think we should limit it to the Beacon. Mm -hmm. so. Right. 
Uh, the other thing. Wondering. My other main concern is experience. I would hope Absolutely. that we would hire our first administrator mm -hmm. with some experience, someone who has been a TA somewhere else, and someone with strong. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Development that. background and, and I think procurement, mm -hmm. those kind of stuff. Hit the. You're I mean, saying we're hit the ground. We're going to be this individual a lot of money, so we Perfect. don't want to hire somebody that we have to train. We want somebody to come through the door and go to work. I think, as I said to you, I know you brought up something, but I don't necessarily disagree with it, but I think you've got to look at the total candidate and what they bring to the table. Right. And while I, I think experience is important, there's other things that are also very important. So we'll, we'll it'll all be done in open meeting, mm -hmm. uh, because if we don't have a committee, we have to do it in an open meeting. I and I think, and, and, Which we did anyway. Yeah, and I think the other thing is that I think I would like to bring in other people to be in that interview process. I think we'd like to get a... A, another town administrator because you know to bring in to have them help mm -hmm. us they wouldn't they wouldn't be a voting member but they would at least mm -hmm. have a little more insight into what you need in the town administrator and well, maybe the first time around they passed on mr brown who the administrator of the town of somerset was doing a fantastic job Titan had the opportunity to hire him right and that got messed up we can't, somerset jumped right on it we can't we can't but he would be a good guy he, I Maybe we'll contact him. Okay. He's a great guy. Okay. You can call him. His name is Mr. Yeah. Brown. Yeah. Uh, he's doing a great job. There's, a lot, there's a lot of good ones around. So. Yeah. So that that would be my proposal. Uh, so I guess we need a motion if. Um. But. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Tom. Is this still open? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um. There was no. No, there was those other candidates. Nobody grabbed the other. The other candidates that were submitted not grabbed. Out yes, there were, and that's what I want to address. This is the first time I'm here and we lost two. No, we lost one. Mm -hmm. We had four good candidates that we interviewed and we talked about. Okay. All right? One of them actually was not free to accept a position in this community. The other three are experienced mm -hmm. town administrators. Mm -hmm. Personally, I felt that we would bring those three in and pick from that. Mm -hmm. I really have a problem going out to advertise again. It just goes on and on and on. Uh, We've appropriated money for an entire year. Yeah. We're not doing anything with it. Well, but it, I, I, I just want let me just respond to that. I, I don't disagree with you at all, Nancy, but I think that the process that has been used has not been a very efficient process. And I think we're, we're, we're cutting ourselves short because we've, we have lost, we actually lost the best candidate, in my opinion, that we could ever have had here because we didn't get it done. I would agree with that, but I, so I still think there are still people within the three that exist that I think what we're going to do again is we're not going to go back, we're not going to contact them, they're not going to apply again. And I think that we may have someone of the three that exist. And I agree with you. Number one, he was my personal number one, right. too. He's not coming here. But I don't think just because we can't get our number one doesn't mean that two, three, and four would not also shine I think in the town of Dayton. I think there's another issue in, you know, the, the salary, you know, we're very limited in what the salary posted. And we, we found, we, when we look at it, that uh, the salary that we, are, we put in the posting is not going to be adequate to hire a decent uh, administrator. But, but I feel like we, we got people who are really qualified for nine. My point yes. is, why are we going to know what the money was? Why would we reject? No, correct. No. Why would we reject three qualified but, people that want to work here for ninety-two thousand dollars a year to go back out to get someone for forty, thirty, twenty thousand dollars more? Because I mean, you it, might get, you might get more. You might get number one. You might get more candidates. You might get more qualified candidates. But then, because this is the fourth time, my cha Mr. Chairman, my concern is we're going to start not getting people to apply just because it looks like we don't have, uh, we're not doing we something really right. Want. Correct, yeah, do I, we really want it? It just kind of looks like, we want just it. like with business, it's starting, people starting to feel like maybe we don't want it, and I don't want to send that message, I know we do want it. We do want it, I just don't want to compromise, make sure we, we I want to make sure we get the, absolutely the best candidates well, in front of us so that we can. For the money that we're paying, we aren't gonna get the tippity top notch long-term experience experienced town administrators, but by the same token, I think we all want somebody that has been a town administrator. The person coming through that door has got to start from they, scratch in this town. There's no one to train them either, so, and you know this. Yeah, not, they've yeah, they've got to come through the door knowing what a town administrator mm -hmm. does. And we've got three candidates, and quite frankly, my own personal opinion is 
if I could flip three coins or a three-headed coin, I mean, I, I just feel to delay this further, 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 a whole year, that money got appropriated, and it's like people in town well, let must me be, be clear. saying. We, we really only have two candidates because another candidate that we were looking at has made a deal where mm -hmm. he currently is, so mm -hmm. he's not really... So we have two candidates. And I, I'd left. be happy with, with the other two. That's just my I'm, personal opinion. We're looking for one day. I just want to. Well, say make sure we get the best one. Can I? I yeah, you I'm can. Not, <laughs> I'm not faulting you. <laughs> no. I, and I was I served on that. I know. Mm -hmm. Which is not resolved. Right. Now, I've been to the. I didn't do the original round. We've been through a number of selectmen through this whole process. Right. That's how long this has been going. I know. Believe me. Exactly. Believe me. Now, also. I feel personally, any one of those candidates mm -hmm. could do the job. Well, that was the that's recommendation we got. That was the recommendation we got. Mm -hmm. I'm the not committee. trying to fall anybody. But what I'm saying is, as far as my personal opinion, and being honest, I was the clerk and I was learning, yeah. learning about that, which it's a learning process for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. But also, I say any one of those people were qualified. And I'll go back to it without mentioning names. I'll go back to the other round, the top candidate, in, which is in the past, is gone. Mm -hmm. I would have put him on it, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not me. You were involved. Not, not, yeah. I wasn't involved. I mean, in I don't, I'm not faulting anybody. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're thinking is, uh, Jack, yeah, you know, I guess I coming guess. in, you want the best. Yeah. But I mean, I just, my, I can't see dragging this the, out. The grass, my thing is the grass, we are taking a bet. The grass may not be greener on the other yeah, side. You know. I for the fourth time. The only thing I'm something else, and I am not going to cut you off. But I have someone who was involved in the process in Somerset. He's now, uh, you probably know him. Uh, I mean, uh, he was uh, involved in picking the one in Somerset. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes the pickings are slim out there. But there are still good people. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. And that. you yeah. and I feel like you found. And I thought eight good. You gave us eight good people. That's my opinion. And w I feel like I had my preferences. I'm sure my colleagues had them. Maybe we didn't get our first choice, but I still feel like out of the seven that you know were still viable, I feel like there's one in there who could be our first town administrator and do a good job. That's why we're discussing. Mm -hmm. um, again, I I only I only can. Vicky? Okay. Um, what I was going to ask is how long of a contract are you going to give them? Like I said, I would support any one of those candidates we put forward. <laughs> I'm not sure why the guy chose another town. It was already in. It was already in. It was already in. It was He had come down here to the town a lot. Well, yeah. because he was, he was torn with the decision. If we had contacted him a week earlier, we'd have. <laughs> a week earlier. Uh, Oh, well, we, this was meeting. all. We haven't decided. Yeah. We haven't it's decided. It's going to be somewhat limited, and we'll go out for another one or re negotiate the contract after a period of time. Well, we need to talk about that. I mean, right. you, you, if you give someone, so you got to. You're going to get stuck with somebody that's bad, but you might get stuck with somebody that's excellent. Mm -hmm. You got to think positive. It's hard to attract somebody to a The first one's going to have a rough road because yeah. you're the first yeah. one. Yeah. So, first of all, it's hard to give somebody a chance. It's hard to give I'm, I'm, we're discussing. I'm not. It's not my decision. It's our decision. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I'm just going to. throw My personal opinion is. I think we should have the three people who still remain, or two. There's excuse two. me. Two. Correct. You're correct. <clears throat> have them come in. Have uh, an interview on camera. Um, <clears throat> and see see if these people are worthy of being our town administrator. I support that because when we were discussing how we were going to do this, uh, what I said was, let's make believe this is a school committee and we're hiring a superintendent. So you interview all these, you know, you pare it down, you interview people. When you get it down to the last three, you announce the names publicly and you bring them in. So people get to see who the candidates are. And, and so I agree with Brett that um, if it's two that's left, um, I think we need to do it at an open meeting and just say uh, it's two men, Mr. So and so and Mr. So and so. These are our candidates, and uh, would each of you gentlemen just say a little bit about your background and your experience? And you know. So let, I'll entertain a motion in, on, on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. 
I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion, or I make a motion rather, to have the two remaining uh, candidates come in to a selectman's meeting and speak about their background and their experience and why they want to be the first administrator in the town of Dighton. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? The only, the only further discussion I'd like to have, I, um, do we need to add in that? I think we should bring in a, another town administrator and maybe another mm -hmm. person from Dighton uh, that's, you know, just so we have a, a panel more than just the three of us and that committee because it's a very it's such an important thing i want to make sure we get a hundred percent someone that we, we will be successful with i don't have a problem with that not at all so do we need i yeah. guess i need to amend that i'll amend that mr okay. mr chairman i amend my motion i uh i say that uh, i make a motion that we call in the remaining two finalists for the town administrator position to speak to us about their background and experience but that we also include a town administrator and perhaps another expert slash Dighton resident to serve on the panel. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. Okay. As a minute. Yep. Any further discussion? Um, okay. okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then if everybody doesn't like them <laughs> in town, <laughs> then we go out. <laughs> okay. Nice to see you, Mr. Boyle. Nice to see all these folks. I love Lightning. You gotta go watch the Celtics 830. Sorry. Ooh, geez, we got five minutes to get this done. Okay, new business. Uh, we have I got a lot of this stuff over here, you know, so you know, okay. we have an application. we, we uh, uh, the Arugios from Arugios Farm have uh, purchased some land. Um, it's the former Sanson property, and they they have they're filing an application uh, for an agricultural preservation restriction program. And so, what they need from us is uh, just a uh, a signature from the from me, I guess, uh, just saying that the town uh, has supports no, it. Supports it. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to point a couple things out. I, I, I guess it takes a little bit of time to do this, but there's a number of things on here that, that have to be answered. One was, do we have an established agricultural commission, which we don't? Have we enacted a, a municipal right to farm, which we don't? And have we implemented a tracking system to prevent issue, issuance <coughs> of local permits or unauthorized construction on protected car farmland, and we don't? Have we identified an inventory uh, map farmland to be protected either as a part of the approved master plan or separate, which we don't. We do have, the next one is do we have a, a CPA, which we do, and then has exercised and assigned rights to a nonprofit preservation organization to protect farmland, and we don't, and work collaborative with regional efforts to include agricultural land use planning, which we don't. And I bring those up only because apparently this process, they get points from the town that has those things, so we, we have that in our plan someplace, but those are the kind of things I think as a, as a community we need to move forward so that this is protecting open space and also giving uh, people like the Rougeos have takes that take such an interest in our community mm -hmm. a better opportunity to get this kind of thing, not just them specifically, but anybody who wants to protect the agricultural land. So. Is, is this the same kind of arrangement that the town of Dighton entered into with Reed Brothers, and the other partner in this was the city of Taunton. Mm -hmm. I suspect so because because it, uh, I'm <clears throat> I'm thinking it's not like we're totally agreeing to this. If it's the same kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, that's still in place. Mm -hmm. yeah, that I land could exactly the same as that property up at Divine Farms. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, that it won't be developed into housing or any that's of that. Exactly what it is. It, it remains up, farm land. Up, up, that's the exact deal well, this on. this this gives up the the. Uh, um, the rights to, to develop the development rights to the community. Right. See, there's another there's another question here which we can't answer yes because they don't want it. But will we contribute to the cost of restriction and amount of contribution determined in consultation? We're not going to check that yes because uh, they don't need us to do that. But it it also says in here if you check that yes that that is more supportive of of the town mm -hmm. uh, for this type of thing. So I think. That, and that would be something to probably come through CPC. Mm -hmm. So I think I just mentioned all those things because I think as a community and as a board, we ought to 
we ought to start looking at those things to see if we can get them in place. And that's part of that list of best practices we will Yeah, just to today. say that, yep. right. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that. Along that divide, right. um, mm -hmm. uh, open space plan over there, mm -hmm. their property values increased because of that. And Absolutely. That be, Absolutely. You know, there's yeah. a house for sale there right now. I looked it up. They're getting big money for that. Right. That's, and, um, and in the case cool. of that, that um, agreement, I'll call it, both the city of Taunton and the town of Dighton did put money into it so that that, that would happen. The but the they're not, yet, and they're not, asking, they're not asking for the financial contribution in this. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to uh, I'll make a motion to support the, uh, the application of uh, Arujo Farms for the agricultural preservation restriction. I will second that. Okay, for the discussion. How many acres are there, Jack? Does it, do you, how many acres is that? Is it the whole? 20, it's 19 acres. Is it all of the land down on Elm Street? Oh. Samson, the San, former Samson. It's property. gotta be. Yeah, it's 19 acres. And it, you know, he's. Uh, Runs they, parallel to the town's, the, the church they, cemetery, right? Yeah. That big open land. Yeah. They've yeah. leased this land for 20 years and they've, yeah. they've always farmed it. Right. It's just now they, they have an opportunity. Yeah, it bugs the council a little. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. a, it's a good piece of land to be protected. So right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I really commend the, Arugio, commend the Arugios for, for doing this kind of thing for our town. And they yeah. may increase some of the home values in there. We can collect more taxes. People want, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't further, tell everyone all our secrets. <laughs> any <please>. further <laughs> discussion or if not, I'll, let's vote. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, we have an appointment to the Open Space Committee. Yay. Ooh. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, this is exciting. Uh, we have a, a volunteer uh, form here from, from Ellen Bidlack to uh, become a member of the Open Space Committee. Uh, and those of you who know Ellen, she's very capable and she knows a lot about the open space. And She worked and on the CPC. And she worked on the CPC. And she was on the Open Space Committee before, so <laughs> she's a wonderful addition to this. and. Uh, and we're going to talk more about open space here in a few minutes also. So I would entertain a motion to uh, appoint Ellen to the open space committee. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. Glad to have you yes, back. Thank you, Ellen. Yeah, we're, appreciate very you, happy. Uh, we're not going to let back. you escape this time. <laughs> We may have some other committees we'll... <laughs> oh, don't say that. Yeah. She'll, she'll not want to do it. We have an open... open. Ellen's probably in bed already. She goes to bed early. Yeah. <laughs> she we, gets up very early in the morning. We have a uh, road opening permit. Okay, this is okay, a... Watch the Celtics. They, nice. they better Thanks, win. Thanks, Woody. Hey, Woody, um, let's talk here in the next few days. Yeah. Right. I'm going to go watch the season. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we have a request from the uh, Dighton Water District. Uh, the Water District, in accordance with Chapter 359 of the Acts of 1950, is hereby notifying the Board of Selectmen its intent to enter upon a town road lake located at 376 Center Street for the purpose of this evacuation to install a new water service at this location. So there. I'll make the motion to grant the request. I will second that, Mr. From Chairman. Him. Okay, yeah. any further discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to ask one question. Uh, as everybody knows, we are working on redoing the website. Uh, one thing, I, I, I think Selectman Goulart and I have uh, discussed it before uh, you came to the board, uh, Mr. Chairman, but I think one good idea would be, for example, with these road opening permits, um, sometimes there are detours and things yep. like that. If we could have that information um, with the length of time yep. that the detour will be there to put it on the website, kind of let folks know, Absolutely. put it on our social media. You know, there's going to be yep. de a detour on such and such street for from you know X, Y, and Z dates, or even a construction period like they do uh, with the state highways mm -hmm. from 9 a.m. Like we did for the bridge, from mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The bridge will be closed. Center mm -hmm. Street will be closed. So they get the traffic over and back, but during the day, so we go should there. probably contact the water district yep. and actually both water districts and uh, uh, Tom Ferry. Yep. Uh, Center Street's a busy street because of the schools and the bridge. Right. So yep. uh, if we know when the road's going to be have construction on it, <laughs> okay. We still got to vote. <laughs> Can we vote? No. no. Okay. <laughs> On favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, 
I guess we have two things. One, uh, um, there's an application uh, that we've been asked to give permission to move forward. Oh, we already did that. Yep. I'm sorry. We did yep. that last <laughs> week. Duh. Okay, the other thing we, we did today, we had a meeting with SERPID, which is the, somebody tell me what that is. Southeastern called. Regional Planning and Development District. Okay. Thank you. Economic and Development we, District. We follow them around. Right. And so I'm becoming familiar with this, but it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity for us to, to do things. And what we talked about today was entering into a community compact with the state in order to get some assistance from them for to develop some best practices around a, a number of different things. And so that discussion today centered on, uh, we talked about three things. One was the, uh, uh, where am I? Stormwater. The storm, the stormwater mm -hmm. to get them to, uh, why don't you talk a little bit more, you know what the requirement okay. um, is. We're working on the, you've heard us, you heard me mention this before, we're working on uh, preparing the application to get our stormwater permit renewed. One of the requirements in that permit is that we show evidence of our plan to um, educate at least the four different groups of people. This is a requirement of the uh, EPA, who currently still has priority with that. So, um, in working with Tom Ferry and with board members, and Jack's new to this, but um, that permit has to be ready and filed by September. So that's the project we have a deadline on. And SERPID is willing to help us develop educational materials and to help us get that, what we need to add that part to the permit application. So that's why this is the, this one's our first priority because of the September deadline. So we're, we're moving ahead with that. So we're gonna identify that as our first priority for this, uh, this process. The second thing we, the second priority that we identified was uh, complete an open space in recreational plan. And again, the, the, the open space committee will certainly be, in, be involved in this and in, uh, in what this will allow us to do once, we have the master plan identifies op the need for open space, but we need to have a more detailed uh, open space plan. And when you, when you get that done, that opens up a lot of opportunities for other funding sources from a number of different places. So I think this is really critical. And the intent would be to, to get an application in for this one as well as the one Nancy just talked about, and then have them come to the Open Space Committee and kind of work mm -hmm. with them to, to get this done. Um, the third one that we had initially talked about was the uh, to protect vulnerable populations to decrease risk people who are more susceptible to climate change. And that would include uh, down on, uh, in South Dighton, uh, which is very vulnerable to uh, flooding and that kind of thing. However, since we met this morning, I reviewed this grant request that we already approved. Oh, CONCOM? Yeah, yeah for CONCOM, and it, it addresses exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So we don't, I don't think we need so to use one of So they're taking care of that. Yeah, they'll, <laughs> they'll take care of that. Okay. And so we need to pick a third one. Um, I looked through these again, and I don't know how, but I think in light of what we just talked about with the, mm. the Ruscio situation, there is a, a best practice under local agricultural and silviculture, establish an agricultural commission to advocate for local farms, administer a right to farm bylaw, and otherwise represent mm -hmm. agricultural interests. And I think that might be a, mm -hmm. a one that we want to entertain. Yeah, and, and under agriculture, we may, if we read all these, mm -hmm. we may come up with a whole we Best make, practice yeah, yeah, yeah. conglomeration. Inclusive. Right. Yeah, yeah. And address Absolutely. a number of those issues. Absolutely. Yeah. The, if I may, um, for, for those who know, Selectman Goulart and I uh, are working on a right to farm. We have been working on it for quite a while. Uh, we had a couple other issues to deal with <laughs> pertaining to farms for a little while. Um, the reason why I personally would support uh, this third best practice to satisfy the community compact cabinet is because instead of having the Board of Selectmen sort of study and work on right to farm, we would be forming an agricultural commission, presumably which would have uh, some farmers on it, uh, residents of Dighton, people involved in agriculture and agricultural business uh, working on it. And so instead of coming from the Board of Selectmen, now I'm not making, you know, not giving us our due credit, we're, we're intelligent people, um, but I think to have a right to farm bylaw come from actual experts 
I think it goes a long way in terms of um, having the public be assured that uh, they're doing it correctly and, and with all the appropriate considerations and due diligence. The other yeah. thing is, in the Weed Whacker Bill, there is a specific, this is when you and I started yeah. working on it, there was yeah. a specific clause in that, that legislation that directly talks about getting an agricultural commission right. organized right. and appointed. Yep. So this ties in well with, with a provision of yep. that also. And we'd be I getting money for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make a comment too. We say right to farm. Right to farm doesn't mean anybody can do anything in Dighton to, to farm. It means that there'll be a, a right to farm bylaw that will address farming but also ensure that the that the residents of Dighton are are heard so they're not subjected to things that would not be appropriate in a certain areas of town, for example, or, or uh, put some restrictions on what people can do with wildlife, uh, with, uh, you know. Uh, livestock. Not yeah. livestock, yeah. not wildlife, livestock. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I don't want people to think it just means we're gonna have, everybody can do whatever they want no. with farming, so. And, and but, to, to that point, you would have public hearing, the absolutely. Agricultural Commission, right. where they would hear those residents' concerns and presumably incorporate right. those concerns into a final model draft bylaw. But I know, but I do know, uh, I was on the Open Space Committee before, and people like the rural, like the agricultural nature of Dighton, so I think that this will help us even to go along with the open space stuff so that we are protecting that that rural nature of Dighton that we all mm -hmm. value so so, so just to clarify the ten thousand dollars that the town has already gotten as part of serpents helping us with the three best practices that we're going to work on serped will take those we will put them in our application and if we can get this done relatively soon and get that application in, SERPED expects this community, town of Dighton, could be designated a community compact cabinet member as early as July. Mm -hmm. And when, once this happens and we, the town gets that designation, it opens up a lot of opportunity for grants in other areas, which would also help CONCOM, I'm sure. So that's why it's so important. We got the first round of money, we got professional help, and now we can continue on. So we're trying to, we're trying to get these things done for Dighton without costing the taxpayers any more money. That's right. The, the goal, right. So. One reason, I just wanted to mention, one, one of the merits <laughs> that I really like about this, and I'm so glad Selectman Goular has really spearheaded this, is because a big component of, regardless of whichever three best practices we choose, education is a big component of all three, and I really think that goes a long way in terms of having whatever these be best practices are be sustainable going uh, well into the future, and, and I really, you, you really did a good and job on this. in the case of two of these, we will have other committees involved mm -hmm. and more, hopefully more townspeople mm -hmm. uh, with the open space and with the agricultural commission so we can get people who know either serve right now on open space but I have an interest but also people with the agricultural knowledge that can right. help us put this together. <laughs> okay, so I didn't contain a motion. We should, uh, let's identify the three mm -hmm. areas, so. I'll make that motion that we, we notify SERPED that our three best practices will be the, the stormwater topic that we covered, the open space uh, topic, and the agricultural commission. And, and those are broad enough that we can, yeah. you know. Yeah. That we, can, we can better define right. those. Yeah, exactly. And we could narrow or we could be more inclusive. Right. It's up to us. The one, is, the one that's really the structured one is stormwater because it's the federal government mm -hmm. telling us you've got to do this, this, and this. Yeah. But these others, we have good opportunity for yeah. uh, Residents' input. Absolutely, yeah. and I and I second that, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Any further discussion? <clears throat> if none, let's take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thanks. That's great. Yeah. Um, good news. Very yeah. good news. We had a lot of meetings today, but I think we had a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, we've been meeting since eight thirty this morning. So I got to tell you, it's been a long day, but uh, but it's all been very productive. Um, so briefly, let's talk about the. Capital Flyer returns to Memorial okay, Day Flyer. Just a just a summary, folks. If you want to grab a pencil, um, this information is also available uh, on the town website. This is the train that will be going to Hyannis from South Station on uh, Monday. Excuse me, Sunday, May the 28th, which is the Sunday right before Memorial Day. 
The closest station for us is Middleborough Lakeville. The train will be there at 8, will depart there at 8.52 in the morning. Um, and if you're interested in getting more information, you can go to the website uh, www.capeflyer, C-A-P-E-F-L-Y-E-R dot even, no, eventbrite, E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E dot -E com. Um, it's free, but you do have to register and they will send tickets to you. And so this little flyer is posted right out in the foyer near the, the veterans office. Uh, but if you call and you have any questions, uh, this, will, this will recognize the troops. Uh, they work with Cape Cod Cares for the troops. There will be a 24-hour honor guard. And um, all you have to be is a veteran, and you can bring a guest with you. So what do you mean all you have to yeah. be is a veteran? <laughs> 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 I'm only kidding. Well, you have to be a veteran. <laughs> you, you don't have to. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to be in active service, or you don't have to have been in a certain war. I get a bunch of veterans in my family. We gotta, we gotta make yeah. a little. Yeah, it's a little so, the only qualification is that you are a veteran. That's well, that's what I meant by that remark, and it's free. So that'll be out on the bulletin board. Okay. Um, do we have correspondence? Oh, we have more announcement. You know. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Okay, I'm just, I'm going to read half. Trash bags, sharps, disposal containers, and recycling stickers are all for sale at the Board of Selectmen's office. Please call 508-669-6431 for more information. There are vacancies on the Historical Commission, Land Use Committee, Green Communities Grant Committee, and the Cemetery Commission. Also, the Community Preservation Committee has an opening for a Historical Commission representative and a possible opening for an at-large member. Friends of the Dighton Animal Shelter will be holding a garage sale on Saturday, May 20th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. behind Town Hall. To reserve a space, call 774-228-8940 or 508-400-6667. Proceeds will benefit the Dighton Animal Shelter. The Dighton Historical Society Home Plate Fundraiser will be held on Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017 from 11 a.m. until closing. The restaurant will donate 20% of your purchase to the Dighton Historical Society. Tickets are required in order to help the society. Tickets are available on the Dighton Historical Society Facebook page. You may print the tickets or just present the Facebook post on your phone at the time of purchase. And just so you know, the, the home plate restaurant is up off uh, on Bay, Bay Street, Street. Yeah, Bay, Bay Street, Street up in Taunton. Yeah. So, and I heard the food's very good there. So. It is. It used to be the yeah. gondola. Good, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. view, too. It's like right near the water right yeah. across the street. Yeah. Very nice. Bulky Items curbside pickup is scheduled for the week of May 22nd through May 29th. Tags for items are available for sale in the Selectman's office. We did also post the flyer on our Facebook page and the town website. This will follow the regular trash schedule. So I'm going to conclude that and just read this one last announcement. Dighton Lions Cow Chip Schedule. So this is for the Cow Chip Festival. Friday, June 2nd, 5 p.m., Rides and Vendors. Also a Woodsman Show. Saturday, June 3rd, 12 p.m., Rides and Vendors. 2 p.m., Cow Chip Contest. That's where the excitement is, folks. 5 p.m., Chicken Barbecue, 7 p.m., Live Band, 10 p.m., Fireworks. Sunday, June 4th, 12 p.m., Tractor Pull, 12 p.m., Rides and Vendors, of course, and 5 p.m. will be the closing. All proceeds will benefit the Mass Lions Eye Research and local Lions Charities, and I will be 100% certain to post this flyer here uh, on Facebook and on the town website for folks, okay? I want to mention a couple other things. Mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going anyways. Uh, number one, I'll be the, as a newest selectman, I've been, <laughs> been nominated or to, to be the judge of the cow chip contest. Secondly, it'll be a dunk tank. Uh, you don't so get out of that by I, being chairman? I, the dunk tank? Yeah, and the ch cow chip festival. No, no? so I, I volunteered myself to be in the dunk tank. So if you want to come down and... <laughs> 
dunk me, and Brett has also agreed he's going to be on it also. Sort of not I'm, agreed. I'm, 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 not, I'm <laughs> not I'm not doing it. I'll, I'll I think you all know about the cow chip. It's been going for many, many years, and it's a lot of fun, and it's a huge fundraiser for the Lions. So you want me to go or you want to, you want to Whoever do Whoever would like to finish. Do do some more? Um, the Dighton Historical Society will be holding a plant sale on May 27th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Dighton at Historical Winslow Davis Museum located at 1217 William Street. Maps and historical memorabilia will also be available for sale. If anyone wishes to donate plants, please drop them off on Friday, May 26th or early on May 27th. Please label them and leave them by the bulkhead. Dighton Fire Association will be hosting a Touch a Truck event on Saturday, June 3rd, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the grounds of Mannheim, New England. Free admission to the event. Children can uh, get up close, look and climb aboard many of the supersized vehicles. Dighton Fire Association will also be collecting donations for the Shriners Hospitals for Children. Mannheim will also be hosting a blood drive on Saturday, June 3rd, free pancake breakfast with a blood donation. The annual town meeting will be held at the Dighton Middle School on June 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. A special town meeting will be held prior to the annual town meeting at 6 p.m. The Board of Selectmen will begin their summer meeting schedule on June 7th. The final weekly meeting will be on May 31st. There will be no meeting on June 7th and every other week during the summer. Normal meeting schedule will resume on September the 6th. Thank you. The other thing I want to mention about the, uh, the town meeting, we will approve the warrant for the town meeting on Monday. And do we read the warrant at that meeting? Oh, yes. Uh, okay. We, we, we well, have. We usually, mm -hmm. we should read it at the Wednesday. We can read it at that meeting, but we should read it Wednesday, too, for informational purposes. Okay. I remember so, reading it once, at least. Yeah, we, maybe, yeah. It's long. Okay, <laughs> I know it's long. Okay, so we'll, we'll be reading that warrant uh, on Wednesday a week from today. Mm -hmm. Also, I think everybody knows, or if you haven't, we there'll be uh, the warrant will be mailed to everybody's home, so you get a chance to look at it before it uh, before the meeting. And uh, we hope we can get some good attendance at the meeting because it's your town. And my hat goes off to you for the signs. I have seen them around town, uh, which denote the special uh, town meeting and the annual town meeting time and location. Kudos, mm -hmm. good idea. Okay. Any reports? Uh, just a quick one. This morning at 9 o'clock, I met with Tom Ferry uh, and three engineers uh, from uh, that have been hired or work directly for AstraZeneca about the Main Street drainage project that's going to take place. Uh, the board reviewed the uh, draft agreement. Um, there were a couple of minor corrections. That was emailed back to me this afternoon. I looked at it again, and I copied you. I emailed the agreement as it came back to David Gay so he can look at it. And once David um, gives his final blessing, we can vote to approve that. This is the agreement that gives the town of Dighton a permanent easement on property that belongs to AstraZeneca. Uh, that will allow Tom to install a drainage pipe. And it also contains the terms and conditions under which AstraZeneca will fund up to, I believe the amount was $60,000 for pipes and material for that project. Um, and all the safeguards are in there in case by any chance anyone working there, uh, if the highway department workers happen to hit anything that appears to be hazardous, they will immediately stop and AstraZeneca will bring, bring in a special crew that if it is hazardous, they will do the work through that area and then our people will finish but our our employees will be protected during that whole process right. and then the other meeting is this afternoon or this evening at 5 30. Uh, mr ferry conducted a public hearing as required by it was chapter 87 of the general laws the purpose of that meeting was to give residents an opportunity to come in and he had his computer here to see the area in the town forest uh, on chestnut street that is going to be cleared of dead trees. Uh, there are approximately three acres of, uh, I think it's red pine, that has died from disease over the years, and they actually now are a uh, 
public has it because they're tall enough if they fall they can actually go across the road the ones that are out near the road and um, there I has it to anybody that's up there walking around the town forest so uh, there was only one resident from that area that came in tonight it specifically wanted to see where it was mr. Ferry stated that the land will not be clear-cut there are other trees growing amongst the dead trees that will be taken down it may also be a very good place for the group of individuals that are planting the American chestnut trees in town to uh, plant some of the trees in that area. So uh, there was no opposition, only one resident. Uh, the meeting ended, in, I think it lasted maybe 20, 25 minutes. And the next step is now Mr. Ferry can put this out because of the size of the trees, this will have to be contracted work. It's not something that we have the equipment to handle it. So that's where we are with the trees. And how appropriate would that be? To chestnut trees on Chestnut Street. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to report on another thing. I, we've all been involved in it, but we had a meeting, a joint meeting tonight. It's the second one we've had. Uh, the selectmen, the zoning board, and the planning board, and, and uh, our building inspector. And it's an example of what we're trying to do more of, and that is connect these committees um, so that we're all on the same page as we move forward. We've had a couple other meetings that have been held that way. Uh, we recently had a meeting, a couple of meetings with the, the soil board, the, the health, the, uh, the board of health. And planning. And the planning. And the building in, in, in conservation mm -hmm. right. to deal with an issue in town. But what we're trying to, to do is get these committees so that we're all talking. We may not all have the authority over some of the issues, but at least we're aware of the issues so that we can all make sure we're moving in the same direction mm -hmm. and we can all be of assistance to each other. So I think we've been very successful in the yeah. last, in the last Absolutely. while, so I think we need to, we'll continue that. So just want you to kind of know how we're, how we're proceeding, which I think is great. Approval of minutes or acknowledgements. Do we have any acknowledgements? No acknowledgements. Approval of minutes. No minutes. Uh, may I make one acknowledgement? Just given, given the timing, I did just want to acknowledge uh, uh, planning board office manager. She wears many hats. Uh, Heidi Swiss, uh, congratulations on your upcoming nuptials. And aside from that, you do uh, a fantastic job. Uh, you're invaluable on the planning board. Uh, we, uh, personally, I have benefited greatly from your expertise this first year that I was a selectman. And uh, I really appreciate you, and I appreciate all that you do for the town. Thank you. You're very knowledgeable about all that planning stuff. I'm very, <laughs> very impressed. So, okay, approval of warrants. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that warrant 46A-17 in the amount of $79,460.49 payroll. Warrant 46B-17 in the amount of $40,566.20 and warrant 46C-17 in the amount of $11,956.80 accounts payable dated um, May 17th be approved. I second that. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion carries. Okay, we went a little longer than we normally do, but I think we had to get a lot, we had a lot of information tonight and I appreciate uh, you tuning in and, and uh, participating with us. So, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Cable. Good night, everybody. Good Have night. a good weekend.